Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Chapter one was definitions, and then some frequency tables, no formulas. Uh, class width, you've got to know. What a horrible formula that is. How do you find the class width for a histogram? Range divided by number of classes. Range divided by number of classes. How far you got to go, divided by how many steps you want to take. It's a very physical idea, it's awesome. Um, so the re first real formula would be this little dude. Some of you guys might not even want to write that down. Because you know how to get the average, but it's not bad, so you kind of put both symbols down. What's this symbol mean? Huh? Of? Uh, because both these symbols mean mean. This one means the population mean, and this one means the sample. Are we allowed to? No, see, this is beautiful. If you put population here, uh oh, no way. I'm pleased, dear God. Formula sheet, nothing torn off, nothing blacked out. I don't know when that happened. I'm going to assume it happened after you finished your test. So then you lose, like, just whatever points I think you should lose because I can't see what was there. Is everybody with me? Yes. I didn't want to waste paper. You, wait, you, you tore it. You wasted paper. Shut up. Use a whole thing of paper. You don't have to use a little, you've all been in the class where you can, you're like, you can write anything you want to on the either side of a card this big. Have you ever been in that class? That's so evil. I'm like, you know, on a grain of rice, you can write every note you want to. And then you, yeah. so you can, you can bring in scrolls, uh, you can bring in reams of, of formulas, right? Uh, as long as you don't bother anybody near you, and as long as it has nothing that I said couldn't be on there, you're good. I don't care. Okay. Um, what else we got? Standard deviation, obviously. All right, so we got this guy. That's actually the what? Variance. Kick ass. That's the variance. So you could put it in this form. What should go here? No, because this is for a, what kind of letter is this? Greek. It's lowercase sigma. So this probably represents a, okay, so. Super Bowl, Roman numerals, rah, population, rah, Greek letters. A little sample, we just use our letters, right? So that's Greek. That probably represents the what variance, the population variance. I like it. So this should be some kind of a mean. It's got to be specifically what letter? Since this is a population variance, this should be the letter that represents the population mean. The mu. The mu, yeah. And if you think about it, some of you guys make that an M, and it looks like a U with an extra leg. We'll put those together, M, U, mu, hey. Or not. I don't know. I just thought of that. I like that. It's just me. And what should it be divided by since it's a population? Do I need to adjust the bottom? No. Why not? So look at this formula. How do I know it represents an average of something? Because I'm adding some stuff up and dividing by how many there are. So it must represent an average that thing. So this is the average squared distance from the mean to the data points. You guys send it with me. Some of you guys are looking at me like, this is brand new. Shit, well, some of you guys say, yeah, it is brand new. If you missed last class, good Lord, you want to watch that video. A whole lot of shit. And maybe come see me. Yes? Could you just go over to the bottom equation? Like yeah, these are both the same equation, right? Just the symbols mean different. They both mean mean. This is the population. This is the 
sample. And that goes along with the idea that a parameter and a statistic sound exactly the same, except the parameter will reference the whole population, the statistic will reference just the sample. So if I said 87% liked peas, you can't tell, you can't tell if that's a parameter or a statistic because what didn't I tell you? 87% liked peas. What's missing? 87% of, of who, right? Of what group? 87% of everybody likes peas would be a, so that 87% would be a parameter. 87% of uh, the 30 people I talk to would represent a sample. sample. It talks about sample, so it is a statistic. statistic. I love you guys. Math doesn't always do this for us, but my God, the letters match the freak up. If it talks about population as a parameter. S statistic goes with a sample. I like it. That should happen more often, but even when it does, Oh, that would be mean to say, Joe. I was going to say you guys screw it up anyway, but you do. All right. So just realize that that's just a quick way to reference what is it I'm talking about. Um, let's see. I don't want to put this. It doesn't really matter. You could also, you could write it like this. You could write it like that. You could write it with the wiffle ball effect. So these are both the same equation. You guys realize that? Just one's had a square root taken, the other one hasn't. So you can put both if you want to. Just know yourself. Know what's going to mess you up. And then don't put that down or something. So what's it look like as a, if it was a sample I was doing, I was working with? What would change immediately the first thing? What symbol would I use for the variance of a sample? What letter? I love you guys. So X bar would go in place of what? Mu. Mu. Well, we'll go in place of sigma. That's the Greek letter what? Who remembers? That's the Greek letter what? Is that the Greek letter T? That's the Greek letter S. And that makes sense. Why? Because it's supposed to represent standard deviations. That's why math people and their <coughs> infinite creativity say, let's use an S. It makes sense, though. It's all right. So what letter am I going to use for a sample? I'll probably use our letter S. See how it's working? So what's the other difference besides the correct symbols? What happens on the bottom? Yeah, n minus one. Why is that? Because it's a, who remembers? It's just a, a little adjustment because it's just a poor little sample. Okay, maybe, maybe. And then, and then you can also write it with a big-ass square root, if you liked. Okay, I like it. Let's go. Anything else you think should go up there? Put it wide open now. Anything else you think should go up there? Anything I, you think I forgot? I'm just a human being. I could have forgot something. Or you could suggest something and I could quickly shut it down. I have been known to go, oh yeah, that would make sense. I'm going to put it up there. But. Um, do you remember when we did the, the table that had the frequencies, but it had the formulas? Does that cover that section? Like, Are you talking about the class width? Uh, no. Um, remember on the paper we had L1, L2? Oh, L2 I see. In? Yes. If you want to use a calculator to do those, you have to know how to build that in your calculator. Okay. So one thing I often see, okay, 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 you ready? Formula sheet. Not formula sheet. And I just love, I just, it would be so funny to me, I still take points off, if somebody wrote this on the formula sheet and then wrote what I'm about to write, that would be freaking hilarious. You put it on the board, man. Put it on the board. All right. So, this, don't put this on your formula sheet. But what I often see on somebody's formula sheet is this shit. Right? 
Wouldn't that be useful? But I'm not letting you put that on there because you've got to know how to construct it. How do I know if I look at a formula, let's say I'm looking at this formula, how do I know what to construct? Cover, oh, I need a bunch of these. Right? Cover the little sigma dude and say, I need a bunch of those so then I can add them up and then I can finally divide by whatever the shit that is. That's how you parse out one of these equations. You cover the little symbol and you say, oh, I need a bunch of those. Let me construct those. And this is the work to construct the numbers to add. Just like we did on that sheet. And why was the sheet so nice? Because that was the first time we did it. On the test, I'm going to make sure you can do it yourself. You like it? Maybe, maybe. Anything else that should be on the formula sheet? If you're just now coming in, that cannot be on your formula sheet. This other stuff totally can't because they're formulas. No notes, no pictures, no. I love somebody made up their own little language that meant something and I saw it and they. And I was like, That's not just Mark. Oh, yeah, it's just Mark. Shut up. And now you're all like, like get marks on this damn thing. Was gonna... All right. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so no other suggestions. Great, because I think that's all. I want to let you on there. I'm surprised nobody's like, can we have uh, width on there? Can we have median? Too late. I would have said no anyway. Um, okay. Everybody's got a practice test, right? Thank God, because they're right after. Uh, <laughs> I do have the answer key. I'm not going to give it to you yet. I do want to talk about one last thing about standard deviation, and then I'm going to open it up to whatever you guys want to do. We can do more examples of standard deviation, we can do histogram, we can do whatever the shit you want. Probably related to chapter one and two would be best. Um, I'm going to take this away now. It's recorded and you're surrounded by people that have it. <laughs> so, there's kind of a cool, uh, the main cool thing I want to talk about is related to the bell curve. But there's also another cool thing that's cool, not just because the idea is nifty, but because of the name. It's named after the guy that came up with it, uh, Chevy Chev. bad for him. I mean, he's dead, but I always call him Chubby Dude, and I have no idea if he was chubby, but Chubby Chef, Chubby Dude. <laughs> Just talk about the freaking stats. Okay. So, just real quick, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I want to talk about it a little bit. Um, if I go talk to a bunch of people and I construct a picture representing the number of people that answered a certain way, the shape of it could be almost anything. So most grades are assumed to kind of follow a bell curve, right? That's grades, and that's because most people should be in the middle with a few people doing really great and a few people really sucking. So that's the way that some people think it should always be, which is foolish, but it does tend to go that way. Um, so let's say that Chubby Dude goes to uh, a little island, and he talks, he asks people, how old are you? And he plots a point. So it ends up looking like this. So oh, this is from zero, and let's say up to 120. Why not? So these people on this island, they live really old. But notice what's weird about this group of ages. Where would the mean be? Where would the average be? Average age. You can do it. I'd love it. You guys are like, you didn't tell me any freaking ages, Jeff. Well, I just I gave you this. 60. <coughs> Roughly 60, yeah, sure. Right, because there's an equal amount here, there's symmetric, so the mean should be sort of right in the middle. Okay, maybe. I didn't calculate that. That might not be exactly right, but that's about what it should be. Maybe, you guys understand? So what is on this island? What kind of people? These are very 
young people are younger, and these are rather older people. I like it, right? So watch. If I go one standard deviation out, so this is the mean. If I go down the standard deviation and up the standard deviation, so let me put right here, this will be one, and this will be negative one. So what does that negative one mean? What does that negative one mean? What did I do to get here? I took So I went down one step. I went down one standard deviation, so that's down one. And that's a positive one because I took, I went up one step. Okay, well, let me stop right here. So what would I put if I did one more step? What would I put here? Two. two. Holy shit, yes, okay. Right? Okay. And then again, if I went one more step, this would be negative two. So what Chevy Chev discovered was no matter what the shit your data looks like, the first statement he found is kind of lame. Within one standard deviation of the mean, there is at least 0% way to go out on a limb. What percentage of people smoking here do you have? Well, at least 0%. So, so far, this is stupid, <laughs> right? Just in case, just to echo what might be in your head. Wow, how long did you work on that? <laughs> All right, but if I go two steps out, and again, it doesn't matter. You make up any list of numbers you want to, anything you can imagine, and it's gotta follow what I'm about to write down. Within two steps of the mean, there's at least 75% of the data. So real quick, I like doing this. So let's say that we are some kind of uh, powerful being and we can like, or we have this uh, ray that can make somebody older or younger, whatever works in your brain. And I just make all these people younger and all these people older because I'm trying to escape this rule. I'm trying to make chubby dude wrong. And I'm like, let me just move these further and then you're wrong. <laughs> right. Very strange goal for being with that kind of power. But is somebody kind of with me on what I'm saying? No? As Chubby Dude says, you take two steps out, you have to catch at least 75% of the data. And I'm like, I want to, no, I want you to be wrong. I'm going to move those apart further. Now you're not going to catch 75%. But what changes if I move this further down, so some people aren't even born yet, and this further up. So there's this guy that was 120, that's now 150, and he's like, what the shit? You guys, so what changes also if I do that? You could do it. No, the mean is in the middle still. The size of the standard deviation. Did I make it more spread out now? Shit, yes, yeah. so and now if I take one step, two steps, one step, two steps, I still catch at least 75% of the data. That's, I can't, we can't do enough math to explain why it's 75%, but that explains why it makes sense that it's gotta be something, because no matter how much you try to escape it, my steps get bigger. Right, so like if the thief started running faster than I did too, I just could always run just as fast. Ah, I'm gonna get away, no you're not. Okay, maybe, so like it follows. Well, that didn't really run, but oh, um, okay, that's chubby dude, and there's another one I don't care too much. Um, that is that works for I don't give a shit what the data looks like. Why should it be a little more specific if I have a normal a bell curve, a normal distribution? It has to look like that, then, right? So most of the data has to be where and near the middle. So here's the middle. So here's what, the, here's what this says. This is called the empirical rule. Not the imperial rule. Don't worry. Dun, 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 dun. Darth Vader said this shit. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm such a geek. 
So, what the empirical rule says, if I have a normal distribution within one standard deviation, we put it like this. I think you guys are a little more used to this now, right? What does this mean? I went one step up. This is one step down. So within one standard deviation of the mean, there is exactly, or you know, it's, it's actually 68 point something, but we just make it 68% to make it easier to remember for the rule. It's actually 68.28 or so. If you know something's normally distributed, you know much more about the shape of it. So you know much more about what percentage falls in there. Um, within two steps, so within one step, there's 68%. Within two steps, there's 95%. So think about it. In terms of height, in ter if this was a height, who are these people? You can do this. You can do this. So there's the average height. Who are those people? Shorter, Shorter people. So if you saw somebody who was had a height more than two steps down, what percentage of the population is out here at the extremes? You can do this. 95% in here, so what's at the extremes? 5%. Yeah, and then what's on that side by itself? 2.5%. Did everybody follow that? Not horrible math at all. If there's 95 in here, there must be 5 total, there must be 2.5% out of here. So only 2.5% of the population would have heights that are less than two steps below the mean. Okay, yeah, like it. And then up here, two and a half percent have some heights more than two standard deviations. So if you saw somebody in this group, you would do a double take. Like I did when I saw, does anybody know Minute Bowl? This is an older name, but he played basketball. He was like seven foot seven. seven. Yeah. I came off a Southwest flight and he saw a group of people and then I saw Minute Bowl's head in the middle. Seven foot freaking seven, right? <clears throat> and so I was, I had to go out, I'm like, that's Manute Bowl. So when he's, I think he's passed away now, is he? Or is he just poor, poor little guy, all right. So if you see somebody here or down here, in real, in just everyday life, if you saw somebody that was three feet tall, you're not being mean, you're just going, I don't see that all the time, right? It's not mean, it's just, we're not used to it. So this is what we call unusual is more than two steps away from the middle those would be unusual things okay maybe and then last little let's, oh sorry so this is within two is 95 percent and within three standard deviations there's 99.7 percent of the freaking data So everybody, look at the door. <laughs> or don't, I don't know. There's a door back there you guys came through. Why did we make it, that's all. If we were all hobbits, would that door be that tall? It wouldn't have to be, right? It wouldn't have to be. So we make it that tall because then we guarantee that a very small percentage of people would have to duck. Right, because we don't want a lot of people coming complaining, all right, man, I'll see you later. <laughs> That would be bad. How wide are airplane seats? They are wide enough so a very small percentage of the population will complain that they got a seat that they can't quite get into, right? But of course they have to keep track of how Americans are. <laughs> so they have to keep their PR on the good side so they make it a little bit wider or force you to buy too. What, how are evil the airline is. All right, you guys semi with me? So this shit right here is immediately useful in real life, just how to construct things so they get less complaints. How many, how many uh, airplane tickets do we sell so we have a small percentage that we have to bump? Anybody ever been bumped? Yeah. Voluntarily or involuntarily? Who said yes? Because sometimes they'll say, uh, if you come up here and get a later flight, we'll give you 200 bucks. And then about five minutes later, oh, uh, <laughs> nobody came up here, we'll give it 300 bucks. And then five minutes later, and somebody's like, Come on, hit that magic number for me and I'll do it. You've never experienced that? Anybody never flown before? I actually am sort of uh, jealous and sad. I want to get out. But flying, I usually my mom will get in a plane because she has to be like knocked out.
carry it on. Um, anyway. <laughs> it'll be it'll be really. um, all right. Cool. So this will come up again, but I want it in your brains now because this is the immediate thing we can do with standard deviation. I told you it was useful for walking around. So real quick, last thing, and then I'll open it up to whatever. I just want to show you a practical use of this. Um, the average heights of American men, the average height is 69 inches. With a standard deviation of, I'm just going to say, I think it's 2.8. I can't remember. I think it is. We'll use 2.8 because it makes more interesting numbers. So, and I know that these are normally distributed. So right in the middle goes what? Cool. What's one step up? <coughs> Seventy-one point eight, right? Because every step is how big? On your chest, don't say step. If I ask a question <coughs> about, say standard deviation. But just talking about it, the concept making it a step makes sense. So Seventy-one point eight. What's this one? Bam, down one. To subtract 2.8, you subtract 3, and then you add 0.2 back on. <laughs> no, yes, that's a little trick. And then some of you guys are like, I've got this magic shit. Alright, shut up. And now, if I go up one more step. Add 3, and then subtract 0.2. Or dough. And then go down another step. Subtract so three and then add point two. Yeah, sixty three point four. Okay, like it. So we start with the easy question. What percentage of American men, I gotta say American men because like uh, who is it? Aust Austrian or okay. uh, New Zealand or something? Uh, or small? What percentage of American men are between 63.4 and 74.6 inches tall? How do you know that? Because it's the second. And more importantly, this is normally distributed. What's the only kind of distribution this works for? Normal distribution. Will we know if it's normal distribution? I have to say it. So a huge part of this course will be, what's the test for if this is normal? Because if I know I'm working with a normal distribution, I have basically all the answers. Later this semester, I'm gonna give you a chart that you can do not just one, two steps, you can do 0.17 steps, you can do negative 1.58 steps, and you can tell what percentage is in this from a chart. For a rule in our heads, three is pretty good. <laughs> Let's just stick with that. But with those three, you could do more shit. So everybody cool with there's 95% in there, right? Because mm -hmm. it's within two. Bam, bam. So what percentage is above 74.6? We already did that one. Yeah, because there's 95% in here, 5% out there, 2.5% over there. So greater than 74.6 is 2.5%. Uh, All right, last question about this. Uh, what percentage is between 66.2 and 74.6 inches? This will take a little bit of thought. There are several different ways to do it, so let me... So between these two, there's what? 68, between these two, 95, right? There's a few different ways to do this. So I want this area, right? Up to, where did I go? Yeah. 
So that's going to be 68% plus whatever the shit that is. Yes? I love you guys so much. It's not that far away, but it's not an answer I have given you. But it isn't that far away to think about it. It really isn't. Uh, 60 in there, 95 in there. If I want, so the question is between 66.2 and 74.6, right? Don't we already know part of the answer? 68% right there? All I need to figure out is what the shit that is. How do I figure out what that is? Okay, okay. So 95 minus 68, but then that's, that's both of these, right? Beautiful. So it's 95 minus 68? 27 cut in half? 18. Yeah, 18. I couldn't even do that. 18.5? No. No. 27 cut in half, right? 27 cut in half is 13.5. Okay, okay. So this is 13.5. So this total thing would be 81.5. So whoever said that earlier, I just want to make everybody catch up to you. I think somebody said that. That mathematics is not difficult, but it's built off of something you just learned like five minutes ago. So I understand it's a little bit freaky, but I want you to see how that kind of math isn't that hard. Okay. All right, all right. That's enough. So now I want to open up to whatever you guys want to talk about. This yeah. So. Th this idea? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you this. I will put a problem like this in the bonus section. But I'm not gonna, I just taught you this today, but I want to get this in your brains. I'm not gonna give you a normal problem like this. Yeah, it's gonna be, there's gonna be like three bonus questions on every test. So you could get up to 106 on each test. Yes? Um, it might seem like a really simple question, but I was having a hard time figuring out um, what should be on the X and Y axis when you're making your histograms on your frequency. I love it. The Y axis can only be really one idea. It's some kind of a count, right? So it's either just frequency, how many are in each category, or it's relative frequency, which is a relative count, right? So this, this axis can only be number of, and maybe you make that into a percentage. This axis will be the situation, age groups, cars, number of salespeople, whatever shit, right? Okay, but the, it doesn't, I don't know why I keep running into an issue of figuring out Yes, because your class width has to be how you make your scale. Right. So, so if 